everybody, it's Diane from Diane's Corner. I'm up here um, on the top of the hill and it's like 50 degrees today. So I thought I'd, and I thought I'd get ahead of the wind. I'm up here, um, let's see if I can turn around. I'm right here by that old plow I was talking about the other day when it was so windy. There, there's the hill. I'll just let you know, there's the water tower. And then here's the wagon, old wagon. These are the pioneer days of the 1900s. Probably a lot to be said there. When you look at the wheels and you look at all of the different pieces that went together to create this, there's the tongue. Yeah, and there's a little piece of scoria holding it up. And then over here, this would have been like a wagon and well, like, uh, even like uh, the Owens came in a wagon. They put a tarp over the top of it. That might have been something that would have been what they would have seen. And here's another. And of course, look at those wheels. Get close to that today. And here you might have a little trunk in the back to carry things. And then here's another type of a wagon. I don't know how old it is, but it's definitely in the old, older range. Well, here, let's look at, here's the old. Across the street, we have the, the new Gen, Dollar General. That came in about, oh, a year ago or so. Now, this is what I was going to look at today. It says, there's a mark, it says Great Western Trail Drive. And um, I don't know, somebody has, uh, I was just talking to Ryan Huglin and he said they put these markers up all the way from here to Texas about that trail ride. So, okay, let's see if I can get close enough to see it. Great Western Trail. Here we go. There is the map, Canada, there's the Montana Territory, Dakota Territory, Wyoming, Nebraska, Colorado, Kansas, New Mexico, that was called Indian Territory, Texas, Mexico. Between 1874 and 1893, millions of head of cattle and horses went up the Great Western Trail from Texas through nine United States into Canada, U.S. states into Canada. This famous trail lasted more years, carried more cattle, and was longer than any other cattle trail in the United States. The trail had a significant impact on the economy of the Western United States, assisting in the establishment of the ranching and livestock industry. Longhorns were gathered around uh, something Mexico and South Texas and were then driven north through Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, Colorado, Wyoming, South Dakota, North Dakota, Montana, and on to Canada. These vast herds established the famous Great Western Trail on which you stand today, right now, okay? The first trail herd to reach North Dakota left Texas in 1884. A daring band of cowboys piloted a monster herd from the Rio Grande to the Little Missouri River until the decline of the trail's use in the 1890s. Millions of cattle and horses continued up the trail where they thrived on rich prairie grasses of the endless plains. Along with cattle came cowboys out of Texas and elsewhere who established ranches and helped grow North Dakota's Western heritage, which is still strong and prosperous. 
From these romantic wild days comes much of our rich Western history that still thrives and is celebrated. Rotary clubs, the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame, local groups and people interested in preserving North Dakota's heritage and history banded together to mark this important trail for future generations. So that's who we have to thank for this nice reminder of the trail all the way from Texas up to Canada. So that's where we start today. And I was going to walk over here now, check across the street there. Looks like they got the truck stopping over there. There's always a lot of them. And here I'm walking and um, I'm just so happy it doesn't have the wind conditions like we've had before. In fact, this is a trail, a, a walking trail, that goes all the way um, into Belfield there. Get a little start here on the trail. Keep going. So now I'm going to reflect back here on the fur traders who the, the French sent over these people called the French Rangers. And they were the, some of the first people into North Dakota. And these French Rangers had nothing but animal paths to follow. And again, they were determined to find the Pacific Ocean. Yes, that's kind of what I was talking about yesterday. So when, um, when they came, they also came with some Jesuits. And uh, those would have been um, uh, missionaries. So the first white men to penetrate these prairies were the forest rangers. And that would have been in the 1700s. Might be getting a little loud now. So I only got through half of the piece I was going to talk about yesterday when I kind of try to keep my time limit. Ted, here's that cougar a little closer. And the bear welcoming us. So here we come to the Trapper's Kettle restaurant and the door. And uh, so we can catch the, there's the arrow and the petrified wood, which turns into rock, of course. And here we are. Get my bearings. There we are. So, okay, so those fur traders, and now here is this display, which is on the other side of that bulletin board I showed you yesterday, a display of the different uh, people who have been honored for Trapper Hall of Fame in here. Bill Jaworski, Gary Jepson, Richard Severson, Wilbert Pierce, Melvin Middlestead, Elsie Pierce, uh, Alvin Brandt, Rich Ackerman, Jerome Rule, George Gissy, I think, Ben Zastrupel, Larry Whitman. So all of these are uh, Trappers Hall of Fame right here. Well, and here's another display. There's the North Dakota Trappers Hall of Fame. And we've got Alice Gangle and her, oh, and Wayne Schmaltz. And Dennis Kozlowski. And Louis Haffel. 
Wayne Schmaltz, Robert Gangle, lots of good stories there to read, but I'm going to keep going here as I want to get over here to the canoe and talk about the fur traders and how they had these canoes that they built. Hi, Matea. I'm taking a little video of the canoe. I, I missed it yesterday. I'm on Lewis and Clark. Oh, in fact, this is the boat. I wanted to show you the Lewis and Clark boat. And notice that they have a little cannon here on the end for protection. Now, uh, President Jefferson, his secretary was, uh, they talked together and they um, decided that his secretary, of course, was Captain Meriwether Lewis. And they decided to add Captain William Clark to the expedition after they purchased the Louisiana Purchase, which was named for Louisiana, which was near the Gulf of Mexico, but they hadn't done any of the uh, exploring to uh, get um, to know what they bought, the land that they bought. So in the back of it would have been, well, actually there was, this is kind of a replica of the of this boat that was uh, made, kind of a replica. And see, that would be cabins in the back there. And then they had, uh, they had a sail also on it. And um, this is the, a replica of a canoe. So you can see how he built this canoe to represent the fur traders. They came in canoes, and Lewis and Carr came in their boat that they had made. And uh, according to the, uh, this, this book I'm getting the information out of is from um, a teacher in Valley City made this uh, Uh, wrote this book anyway. He uh, this is 1923 edition, so it's like uh, one of these books that you find in the arcade or a used bookstore somewhere. And um, so it it's where I'm getting my dates here. And it says the canoes were from 24 to 30 feet long, and usually carried a ton or more of skins, besides the men. And um, those were made out of birch bark, and uh, that's kind of interesting. That was 1783 that uh, we we're talking about. And let's, let's see, I just I got my page a little closer to me today. 83, 89. Okay, yeah. The first company, let's see to establish regular trading posts in North Dakota was the Northwestern Fur Company, an old French company organized at Montreal in 1783. So in 1789, this company sent Alexander Henry to the Red River to establish forts and to take possession of the trade in that region. And uh, they came by way of Lake Superior and along what is now the northern boundary of Minnesota. So this is the 1700s, now we're way back. Henry reached the Red River and made his way up the crooked stream, and this party was known as Henry's Red River Brigade. It, it consisted of four canoes carrying 21 persons, and then they had two horses that were led along the bank, and they are believed to be the first horses brought into this part of the country. And the canoes were of the largest type, and each carried 26 packs of provisions weighing about 90 pounds. And uh, so that's kind of a little bit about the uh, canoes and the first fur traders. And then Lewis and Clark, of course, that uh, was 1803, which is almost 100 years later that the explorers came. and they got guidance with the fur traders on proceeding along these trails. So it was a process of winning this uh, gateway to the west here. 
So 1804, Lewis and Clark reached Mandan with this boat, uh, similar to what he's got here. And it, um, it they uh, found a guide, and everyone knows her as Sakakawea, or bird woman, and they, they got to know her, and uh, she was married to a, a Frenchman by the name of Charbonneau, so she became their guide and guided them over to the Pacific Ocean. As a young girl, she had been a Shoshone and been captured and brought over and lived until ad adulthood, and she was more than overjoyed to join them on their trip to the Pacific Ocean. So, let's see. Well, that's my story today. Thank you for joining me for Diane's Corner. Have a great day. Bye now.